With new Halo Infinite Anvil Operation officially released, 3 for 3 has done something that I've never expected. They put out new content while also continuing their money grubbing practices. So far, fans have enjoyed the newly dropped content update, so it's my job to break down this operation and either crap on 3 for 3's performance or give them their praises. And with the release of this new operation, 3 for 3 added something that shows the untapped potential that I will provide some guidance on for the future updates. Does 3 for 3 create buzz with their new operation to get fans to jump back into the game? Should we consider this update a success overall? Let's hunt down some sentinels, get angry at the store prices, and jump right into this. So when I looked at this update overall, I felt like there was a solid amount of good things that I liked right off the bat. And the most important thing that really caught my eye was this new game mode, Sentry Defense. And in my opinion, it's really fun. Sentry Defense is basically a PvP mode in big team battle that forces two teams to have to go after each other's sentry and try to destroy it. Sentries are basically bosses that were similar to what we saw in the campaign, and they kind of were these types of bosses we fought multiple times. The first one was really easy and we kind of clapped them pretty fast, but then by the end there was a more annoying version of that boss which kind of took me by surprise. Each sentry has roughly a thousand HP and as you go after them and kind of attack them, it decreases the overall score of the enemy team, which causes you to win. Whichever team has the more HP left in their sentinel will win by the end of the match whether it is over completely with 0% or if it just time runs out completely. Now when I looked at this game mode, I was really shocked that they were actually adding something brand new to this game and granted this is a forge game mode made by the community but overall it was something that was completely different that we have not seen in any halo game which new things mean a great addition because i feel like a lot of times fans are always just so gun ho of looking to the past or looking to forward nostalgia to bring them to the game again sometimes it's better to actually incorporate new things that are not seen before and this also does bring on things from previous games like halo 5's warzone where you're fighting against enemy ai to help you win the match so it kind of takes in the concept of boss fighting that we saw in halo infinite's campaign and Halo 5 and said, well, let's add points to it. Because now what it does is it forces players to have to attack or defend their Sentinels and it keeps the match going forward. And one of the cool things I thought you could actually do, which they played into this in the actual mode, is that you can throw in a health regenerator to actually heal your Sentinel. So it turns that equipment to be a really important one for this map. And in some cases, it actually got us back into the game because all of a sudden, if we were, let's just say, losing 500 HP to 200, which is our Sentinel, one of our teammates threw a health regeneration on and it got us really close to being even. And it was a really smart strategy by some of our teammates, but that was kind of the best part about it, is that you have to be smart when going about this. What I really liked about this game mode is that not just with playing on the new map, Man, but also on all the other big team battle maps, it actually works out pretty well because every team gets two sentinels, one that it's more in the open and one that's deeper in the base. So it encourages you to actually have to go and attack and get kills, but also try to get closer to the base. Some maps work better than others, but I feel like overall it was a pretty fun experience. I will admit that there were still some glitches that I did notice while playing on this mode, but there are times where I'd be stuck in a infinite loading screen or the game instantly ended in a tie and sometimes people join the game late when there was literally 100 hp left in the sentinel and they just lost the match because they got forced to join this game late in the session and i feel like that's where some things like because it's a forge map that does happen but i feel like overall there was not as many of these glitches but there was definitely something there and when i'm thinking about the untapped potential of this type of game mode it just shows you that fans want a pvpve mode and the last time we had one of those was with warzone if you look at the way this game mode is playing it's just like if you were playing in those classic game modes that we saw from halo 5 like warzone assault or just warzone in general where it entices people who attack bosses to gain points for your team imagine you were able to recreate warzone in halo infinite and take those types of boss battles that we saw throughout the campaigns and introduce them here this is something that i feel like a lot of people are missing out on there's a coalition of halo fans that really enjoy warzone but there is also those same people that say well warzone was always tied with the loot boxes but my opinion is if you just remove loot boxes out of this and you just bring warzone back the game mode is just instantly fun i feel like that was one of my favorite game modes to play in halo 5 and yeah i guess this whole concept of 
refueling or regenerating weapon cards it was always annoying but at the same time if you don't really have that as a major problem then the game mode itself would just be fun and then when i look at the new map command it is a solid 12v12 and 8va map because remember when you think about these new types of maps being introduced, a lot of times they're built in fours and they are built for multiple tiers. Because when I look at Command, it is a great map. It kind of gives off that live fire 2.0 look where it looks like it's just the entirety of the base rather than just a small section that we have in 4v4 game modes. So it kind of opens it up more. And what's good about it is that it entices close quarters combat. Now, I think in 12v12 big team battle, I am more of a fan of larger scale maps with more vehicles and intertwined in it. But this one actually has a good size or it's more variable in ways you can combat with ghosts and warthogs gun hogs what's good about command though is that now you're creating a map that can be double dipping in both 8v8 and 12v12 which always is good because now you're just adding more maps in the playlists every time i played on this map so far it has been a great time so i have no problems so so far about this i haven't felt like i was spawn camped or anything like that and i feel like it's a good balanced map for what it is the only downside is you're not going to get a lot of large scale vehicle combat and lastly, when it comes to this good section, the aesthetic to the anvil operation is actually pretty cool. Now, if you don't know, anvil represents that coalition that was built between the Swords of St. Helios and the UNSC. So this is supposed to be that kind of collaboration of armor sets and schemes that go with how the elites look and how UNSC designs are built. So the way that this anvil coatings and armors look, it is pretty cool. This is actually something that I have been trying to push for 3 for 3 to do for basically a few seasons now where I want them to go into different alien armors and make UNSC variants of them so that they can be unique and be different. And that's what we're getting with this. And I feel like, yes, that there are some flaws with this anvil operation when it comes to the customization, which I will get in the next section. But when looking just at what they're doing here, and what the look of it is, it looks pretty cool. Even the color schemes are representing of the different elite warriors, and I like what they're doing with that. And I, I feel like that's a good thing. But what do you think is the best aspect of the Anvil Operation Halo Infinite? Let me know what you think in the comments below. If you liked the video so far, drop a thumbs up and subscribe to support the channel. Now, just like in 3 for 3 fashion, whenever there's good, we have to think about the bad or, or what's the catch in this situation. And when I'm looking at the fact that they're armored, right? And these anvil armor schemes are really cool and very unique. The downside is, is, is that there's only one set that you can unlock in the Operation Pass, which seems pretty cheap. I mean, I get it. There's probably roughly five to eight people working on Halo Infinite at this point. But at the same time, it's almost like like you can tell that there's only five to eight people working on this game. There's a total of one armor set you can unlock for your operation. And even the store is starting to feel bare bones, which is crazy knowing how much 3 for 3 has has slammed the table of trying to push this shop going forward. And I'm sure that throughout this month, they're going to add more armors to the store that are going to be cool and different but my goal for three for three at this point would be to try to appease the fans like i know that you guys are moving on to halo 7 or halo ce whatever you guys are working on next so that means that you should try to keep the fans there as much as possible and you should be wanting them to unlock more armors right by just playing the game and when i look at the store the store's prices are still gross what's crazy though is that they actually are starting to give you the ability to buy individual pieces not saying that they're putting it in in like a store front where it's like all right you like this bundle buy this one piece of that bundle no 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 what they're doing is that they're giving you an individual piece that's worth six dollars like an arm band and charging you a expensive price six dollars five dollars four dollars and then the bundle of all three things together is going to be worth ten dollars so all of a sudden yes if i buy each thing individually it will amount more than ten dollars but i can buy all three of them for ten dollars if i want to but no one in the right mind will actually do that so yes they are bundling them to make them cheaper who in their right mind would think that a armor piece is worth six dollars when in reality it should be extremely cheap like two dollar piece of armor not six, not getting to ten dollars. It, it's getting crazy and it's always been bad. And fans have been slamming the table how bad the store prices are, and they still really haven't changed them. And I said this multiple times. If there was something in the store that was worthwhile, I would buy it because it is a cool thing added to Halo that I would enjoy wearing. But 
if it's not worth it, I am not touching that. And lastly, when it comes to now the cool part of this new additions that we've had recently was the exchange. And exchange has always been a great thing in my my mind, a, a great idea. But the problem is that it's just they find a way to make it not as good as what it could be. When I look at the exchange, there are two problems I noticed right off the bat. Number one, the issue is that they should be adding more new items to the exchange rather than just having a bunch of old stuff that was missed out on. And I know that that was their intention so that people who missed out on special events or operations passes that ran out and they said, well, you know what? We want to give you the ability to earn these things by just playing. Great. But at this point in time, you really just want people to unlock as much things as possible. Don't just have old stuff that people missed out on because what happens if you get fans like me who have been playing Halo Infinite since day one and are dedicated and all of a sudden have nearly everything in the exchange already obtained for these newer fans that is a great thing because you're going to give them all these possibilities to earn things but for fans like me who have been playing since day one it's so not worth it and i feel like that's where you're missing out on you're missing out on the easy layups where it's like you know what let's let's stop at the shop already and let's just add everything to the exchange and then what it does is it causes people to grind and earn these credits then buy things at the end and lastly the second part of this is that the prices for the exchange are, are worth Worse than the store like how is it freaking possible that there's a color scheme a blue and white color scheme or better yet a gray color scheme that's worth 21k in credits 21k this is not gray gray is it, we there's already a gray the normal team color is gray how can anyone justify a 21,000 credit price tag on a gray armor scheme and if you want to think about the, the the dumbness of this is that the last operation you can earn 15,000 credits by completing the operation so technically you can even buy that color if you completed the last operation alone and I went on an entire tangent of anger on this on the previous uh, operation video I made mainly because they're setting you up that you can't even earn half the things that they show it's just it's just blasphemy it's just crazy for me to think that and I, I already kind of know this but it's not just a market Microsoft problem. It's a three for three problem. Yes, I know that leadership has changed in three for three, but I feel like they're still doing these things that people hate the most. And the exchange should be so much more. I love the idea of what the exchange is, but you're not doing anything to change the bad practices that have already been present at that point. You're just you're just halting any sort of progression that we should be getting with this. Overall, there was good and bad of this operation. I feel like the additions of a brand new mode was a pleasant surprise, even though it was made directly in Forge. What caught me off guard is the fact that 3 for 3 is up to experiment, which is something that is great to see. The new map addition in Command was also a great addition in adding to the map count for Big Team Battle, which always gets me excited. And even with the shop still being gross and the exchange not living up to its potential, this update was still pretty cool. My hope is that they continue adding armors to the operation and just look to expand on these operations so we get more content in these areas. I'm always down for maps and modes being added to the game because at this point, what else should you be doing? I mean, maybe adding weapons, of course, but I know we're never gonna get that. And with new modes like Sentinel Defense getting so much love, it tells me that the fans are dying for Reapers of Warzone or Warzone Assault to come back into Halo. Just exclude the bullshit loot boxes and I'll be happy. These Halo Infinite operations have been hit and miss since they started changing it from being seasonal drops to operational drops going forward. And every time I see a good thing, there's always something of a negative that always throws some shade on the overall operation itself. But one trend I can see right off the bat is that if 3 for 3 does add new maps and modes and things for us to earn and just play through, fans will be happy. So my suggestion is going forward is to continue doing this and make sure you do right by the fans that are still there playing your game. Because what else are you doing at this point? If you're interested in the future of the Halo franchise, I recently made a video covering what I would want to see in the future multiplayer aspects in Halo 7. Go check out the video in the end screen and let me know what you think. Until next time, this is Marsman signing off. Peace out, guys.